Good morning. It is June 22nd and time for our daily dose of good news. So we're reading from Revelation today, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance. I know that you cannot tolerate evildoers. You have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them to be false. I also know that you are enduring patiently and bearing up for the sake of my name, and that you have not grown weary. But I have this against you that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then from what you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Yet this is to your credit. You hate the work of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, I will give permission to eat from the tree of life that is in the paradise of God. Here ends the reading. Revelation, as you may already know, is one of the most visual books of the Bible full of imagery and sensation and very much written in a way to evoke feeling. And so that's a little bit of a shift from sometimes our more logical, practical, very literal mindset. Um, so it's a bit like poetry. It's a bit like art um, with lots of symbolism and looking at the truth of God in different ways and different perspectives with different viewpoints, which is part of the fullness of God. So that can be a fun thing to do. So the beginning of this text starts with imagery right off the bat of saying, the angel is saying, I want you to write this to the church in Ephesus and know that these words are from the one who can hold seven stars in his right hand. And just the imagery of that symbolically that God could be so big and so amazing and so everywhere, so majestic, so all-powerful. Just the feeling of what that's like, that these words are from the one who holds seven stars in his hand, if he wants to, and that he walks among the seven lampstands, and the lampstands are typically symbolic representations of the church. So God's walking among the churches. And what's that like? What do we think about when we hear those words? And then there's pretty specific detail about this is what you're doing that's great and encouragement even in that. I see you. I recognize that you're working and you haven't grown weary and that you're persisting and that you're looking at people who claim to be apostles and aren't and, and weeding them out and trying to stay to the truth of the gospel. But I have this piece against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. And I think that component is remembering how deep our love can be for God and holding on to that, centering on that. And the direction is, I want you to repent. I want you to recognize what you have left, what you have fallen away from, what you have given up. I want you to repent and do the things you used to do at first. And I know as good Lutherans, right away, we're going to probably say, works righteousness. No, we're not about works. No, 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 no. I think what they're trying to convey in this text, though, is more about some of the discipline of turning your ear towards God being with God, being present with God. And since Revelation is a little bit similar to poetry, 
And I haven't read poetry to you um, on the Daily Dose of Good News. I've sung and done other things, but I haven't read poetry. I thought this poem by Kathy Sherman called The Deep Well, which is in a text by Joyce Rupp, kind of goes along with this in maybe a helpful way. How far down into my secret self do I go? How far until I find you, whom I seek? How often until I am saturated with love? Further, always further, so it seems, lower the bucket of prayer into the depths. Slowly bring it forth and taste its treasure. This constant dipping inward to the source can be a slow, tedious, and lengthy process. At other times, the bucket falls without effort, and I draw forth quickly and drink until I am full. And I think if we can consider the seeking God, the putting the the bucket into the well of our souls and seeking God, what do you want me to know? What do you want to show me? Where is your love in abundance? And so praying and sort of focusing and recentering ourselves on God. So I hope you enjoy the imagery from Revelation as well as the imagery from the poem. And if you would like simply more literal, my shirt says, just don't quit, which is a good reminder for us to just put our eyes on God. Don't lose the love we had for God at first. Keep centered on that. Keep focused on that. That's our orientation. I hope you have a great day that is full of abundant love from God. Take care, everybody.